Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Drawing with Back Porch Originals. Uh, today we are going to be drawing an apple. So we're going to be using the techniques that we learned in our introduction to pencil drawing. So we're going to be using shading and blending and we're going to be using our tortillions, our blending stick again. Um, we're going to work in the same manner that we did last time in that I'll give you a brief introduction and then we're going to do an overhead shot. So before we get started, the first thing I want you to do is find an apple and I want you to take a picture of it with your phone. So we're going to put the apple down level on a table, kind of like this. And then what I want you to do is get a picture kind of head on of your apple. And then I want you to go in and edit the picture so it's in black and white. So we're going to take a color photo of the apple face on and then we're going to edit it so that it's black and white. That is the picture that you'll be working from. Okay, so I've already taken my picture plus I have my live apple here. So we're going to get started. The things that you need are your paper, Bristol if you have it, if you don't, just a regular drawing paper, your pencils if you have a two, four, six, or eight B pencil, preferably those, if not whatever pencil you've got, a white eraser, and our blending stick. So if you remember from our last tutorial, we made a blending stick with paper. So those are the things you're going to need today. Let's get started. Okay, so we're all set up to draw our apple. Everyone has taken their photo of their apple, um, moved it to a black and white photo, and now we're going to put that onto paper. So I'm gonna be working right here so you can watch as you go and uh, pause whenever you need to pause to catch up. So the first thing we're going to do is start to draw the shape of our apple. Now, depending on the type of apple that you have, the shape of the apple will be different. Um, Red Delicious apples are wider at the top, come down quite a bit more narrow at the bottom. Uh, Granny Smith is more round and Macintosh is more round. So just depending on the shape of the apple that you have, that's what we're going to draw. But in general, they are wider at the top and more narrow at the bottom. So I'm going to start by just doing a very soft outline. Hopefully you can see this. I'm gonna start at the top with that rounded edge of the orb of the apple. And we don't want this outline to be heavy. So if you remember from our last class where we were doing shading, we were doing a very light outline when we did our circle. Hopefully everybody got to practice on those circles. Now see, I've come down a little more narrow as I come down to the side. A Little bit of bump down there at the bottom where you have the bump on the bottom of your apple. And then coming back up the other side. So what I want you to do once you have this done, now no apple is going to be a perfect shape. Uh, mine's a little flatter on this side, a little more rounded on this side. But in general, you want it to be symmetrical. I'm gonna leave this space where it's just a little bit flatter because that's the shape of my apple. Then the next thing I'm going to do, once I have this outline, the next thing I'm going to do is put this little dip. So what we're talking about is the part of the apple right here where it kind of dips down and depending on the angle you look at it, you will see that dip in a photograph. So I'm going to create that dip right here, just a small little semicircle, just like that. It's very small. And then we're going to create the stem. So the stem of an apple, as you can see, quite narrow as it goes into the apple, and then it comes up as a little bit wider where that stem joined the tree. So we're gonna do exactly that. So you're not going to see where it's coming up out of the apple. The angle it to one side a little bit, and it's gonna come up just a little bit wider. And then back down quite narrow as we go into the apple, okay? So approximately the center of that little divot that you created, can be a little bit off to one side or the other. Just create that line there. So then we have to decide where's the light hitting our apple. Now based on your picture, you'll probably have a little reflection somewhere on your apple. I'm going to have my reflection happen somewhere in here. So I'm just gonna keep that there, just a light little line of where my reflection is. So what's next? Well, next we're going to start to shade. So if you have a pencil that's softer, so for example, this is an 8B. If you have a pencil that's a little softer, we're gonna use that. If you don't, we'll work with what you've got and we're going to use our blending stick. Remember our blending stick that we made uh, last time? 
by rolling paper. If you haven't done one yet, yet you can go back into the other blending and shading tutorial and uh, just fast forward to the part where you make a blending stick. So we're gonna have our blending stick there and then we have our white eraser. So I'm going to start shading. And if you remember shading from our circle, we started on one side and we followed the shape of the circle. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Your apple's going to be a little bit darker down toward the bottom of the apple. It's where the shadow hits and a little bit lighter as we get to the top. But this side of the apple is going to be darker. Now, one thing I'll recommend to you that I can't really do because we're filming this is always turn your paper so the part of you that you're working on is what's closest to you and you're not having to reach. It's true for pencil and it's especially true for painting. It makes it a lot easier when you're not having to reach really far. So I'm following this line to start my shading process. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna do a light coat of pencil across my whole apple. So the other thing I'm going to do is I wanna work this way. So what I want you to do is work following the curve, but I want you to follow the curve on both sides. So you're following the curve here, but you're also following the curve over here and toward the center of the apple, it's going to come down a little more straight, okay? So remember the curve, but we're not gonna follow it in a circle, we're gonna follow it kind of oblong and shade, and we're going to come this way. And we're building to this spot right here. So we're going to shade very lightly all through here. And I'm gonna leave some lighter areas because this apple is has quite a few stripes on it. This apple I believe is a red gala and it has some really nice texture and stripe on it. So I'm going to be doing that heavier at the bottom with my shading than at the top. And you can see I start to get a little straighter as I get toward the center of this with my shading. It's just some nice little lines through here. Now I'm going to change direction. So I'm going to be angling more out toward this side of the apple. And remembering those spots that I had where my apple is going to be lighter. So right in here, I'm gonna have those highlights. So I'm gonna to try to not shade too much into that. So see how I'm only going up to that divot that I created? From that divot, I'm going to have light coming up and out. This is going to be more shaded in here. So I'm still following that curve, see that? And I'm gonna have light coming up and out this way on my apple. And then right in here, I'm gonna shade a little harder, but not around the stem. See my stem? Now, if you go over where the stem is, we can always erase. It's a great thing about pencil. It's much more forgiving than something like watercolor. So I'm gonna be a little bit harder through here. And even on my first pass with the pencil, I'm going to go a little bit darker. It's gonna create this space. It's going to be quite dark when we're done, okay? So coming up and out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my first coat of shading on this. We're gonna pause and then we'll come back when we're ready to start blending. Okay, so you, as you can see, I have my first level of shading done with my pencil. I'm a little darker up in here um, in the little nook at the top of the apple. And then I'm also a little darker at the bottom. So now we're going to take our blending stick. We're gonna start with blending this top area so being very careful to stay along this line, we don't want to darken this area right below it. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna blend just a little bit with our stick. Staying on either side of our stem of our apple. We're just gonna blend a little bit right here. So if you get into the apple, you can take, the, or the stem, you can take the corner of your eraser and just clean that up. See that? Be very careful when you're wiping that away because your hands can pick up pencil and then translate it, transmit it to parts of the paper that you didn't want it to go to. 
Um, okay, so now we're going to go, we've blended this a little in here. Now we're going to go into the apple and we're gonna start to shade. And like we did with the circle, we're going to shade in the same direction that we did with the circle, the same direction that you applied your pencil. So semicircular as we go through these outer areas of the apple. Now, if you're working with a sketch or drawing paper like I am, it's going to be a little less smooth as you blend because your paper is more porous um, and the paper surface itself is not quite as smooth. If you're working with a Bristol, you're going to get a much smoother outcome than what I am right now, which is lovely. Nice thing about drawing apples is we do wanna have some texture on the apple. I'm gonna shade down there. Now I'm gonna come up this side. I'm gonna blend up here. So you can see, not only is my tortillion or my blending stick blending the pencil that I've applied, but it's also taking what it's got in the end of the stick and it's using that to smudge as well. And again, just a reminder, the reason we don't do this with our fingers, because your fingers have oil on them. We don't wanna transmit that oil from our fingers onto our art that we're working on. So as you can see, a little bit lighter up here. I'm just gonna blend just a little bit. I didn't shade with my pencil in this upper area because I don't want it to be overly dark. My tortillion, my blending stick, does enough of that work for me. Also, it's fun to be lazy sometimes. Okay, so as I'm finishing this first layer of blending, you can start to see the shape of the apple and what's going to be the lighter spot of our apple over here. I'm going to go in and erase some of the pencil that I've got over here. I think perhaps I went a little too heavy on the pencil on that side. So I'm gonna come in and just remedy that with my eraser. Okay, so I'm just gonna take my eraser now. I'm just gonna come in and remind myself where I had those highlighted areas. So it's very gently if you're gonna brush that off, very, very gently. There's my highlighted area right here and right there, okay? So I'm gonna try to maintain the integrity of that by keeping that area mostly clear of pencil. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to shade a second time, really darkening this area here. So this spot right in here, this little shadow in the divot at the top of the apple, that's going to be the darkest point in our drawing is right in here. And then we blend that up and out. We don't want it to be like a solid difference between it and as the apple comes down from it, but we really wanna have this nice and dark. So I'm gonna go in and darken that again. We'll be blending that again with our tortillion just to get that as shaded and dark as possible. It doesn't hurt every once in a while to just go over that even more than you're going over everything else. Okay, so I'm going to go in Gonna add another layer of pencil. I really want you to focus on whatever side is gonna be your more shadowed side. And we're gonna, going to do quite a bit more pencil application on this side. Now remember, just as with our circle, it might feel as though you're not applying much here, but trust me when I say you are, we are getting darker with it. Just gonna keep going in, following that same line. Shading away, a little bit more light up toward the top because that's where the light is hitting our apple. Substantially darker toward the bottom. So I'm a little less careful when I'm down at the bottom. Get a little more careful as I get up into the lighter areas. Can you see that as I go? Quite a bit darker down here. Now, if you're working with an HB pencil, which is a little harder, don't get too frustrated because it is a harder pencil. It will take a little more time for the graphite to translate onto the paper. Okay, so I'm gonna come back. 
when I've got a little more shading done here and then we'll blend the next level. So we've done our second layer of pencil application whoops, onto the apple. And what you can see is I've started to add some lines. And why have I done that? Well, that's because this apple itself has quite a few lines in it. It's the nature of the apple. Now the apple you're working with may or may not have that. I like it because it adds some texture to it. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna shade. And I'm going to start again with shading at the bottom and come up and keep my edges nice and crisp. Remember that you have your eraser as well to help clean up the outside edges. And we use a white eraser instead of a pink eraser because we don't wanna leave any traces of color on our paper as we go. The runaway apple there. So I'm coming up, coming around this edge here, coming down. I'm not overly blending where I've created those lines, but I am going to go over those lines again to do another coat. Just gonna come in and blend that a little more. Now, if you feel like, you get to a point where you feel like your blending stick or your tortillion is too dirty, just take a pair of scissors, cut it on an angle, and you have a fresh tortillion to start with. Just blending that again. And again, I'm going to leave these areas lighter that we had talked about. I'm getting a little bit outside of my edge there, but I'm gonna clean that up with my white eraser. And then we've just gone in and just blend it all the way around. So you can see I've got that highlighted spot there. I'm still not happy with how light it is, so I'm going to just come in and clean that up a little bit more, and I'm going to come in and just lighten this little spot here, just a little bit more, and then again, this little highlight here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go clean my edges. I find it's easier to clean your edges as you go, just to keep them nice and crisp than it is to try to clean everything up at the very end, okay? I'm brushing in toward the canvas um, just because I wanna to try to be careful about not spreading too much pencil line. And as you can see, I've darkened up in here in this little divot at the top. Okay, so we've got that done and our apple's really starting to take shape. We'll probably do one more layer of shading in there and I really want you to focus on blending down at the bottom here. We want this as uniform as we can get it. And again, if you're working with a sketching paper like I am, the goal of getting it to be nice, one nice solid color may not be as achievable as if you're working with a smooth Bristol paper, but we're working with what we've got today, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna just get that a little more blended here and I'm definitely going to darken on this side of my apple a little bit more and blend that down in. But before I do that, we're going to do our stem. So I'm gonna come in on my stem right here. Now, the other thing we have to remember is where the light is on our apple. So here's my stem, and my stem is brown, so it's a little darker color. And where is the light on our apple? Well, the light on our apple is on this side. So that means this side of the stem is going to be darker. Now, I still want to be able to tell the difference between the stem and the background behind it. 
So I'm going to be pretty careful on my stem to leave a couple of little light spots there. See how I've done that? So that you can differentiate between the stem and the background behind it. So I'm gonna be a lot harder on this side of the stem because that's where the shadow is. I'll be a little bit lighter on the other side. So I'm gonna come down and I'm going to gradually lighten as I go. Now, I'm probably not going to do too much blending on this with my blending stick. A, the point of my blending stick is pretty wide, this homemade blending stick, so I don't wanna blend outside of the lines of the stem. But also it's okay for the stem to have a different textured look to it than the rest of the apple. So I'm going to keep kind of that more linear look to it. And notice also them shading in a vertical pattern up and down. So I'm probably going to leave that for my stem. I may just come in, just clean up that edge a little bit right there. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. And especially not on your first try, does it have to be perfect? Whoop, there goes the apple again. I'm just gonna clean up in that outer edge. So I'm going to leave that for now. I may or may not do anything else to that. I'm going to leave that for now though. So now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to shade. I'm going to shade heavily on this side of the apple. Again, you feel like you're not adding more pencil to the apple, but in truth you are. Clean that line up right there. And as we add layers, you are able to press a little harder. Not too hard though. If it's hurting your fingers, you're definitely pressing too hard. I'm gonna press just a little bit harder there. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to shade this side just a little more. And then I'm going to darken all of the lines. So I'm not doing any shading on this side, just at the bottom here. And then I'm going to be shading a little more on this side, and then I'm going to darken those lines. So we'll come back when I have that done. So I've done my final coat of pencil onto um, our apple, and I've also added, as you can see, some quite darkened lines onto it. So I'm just going to go in. I'm not going to blend much in the top. I want those lines to stand out. I'm just going to go in and do one last blend here on the bottom of the apple. So just one last blend. On this side, just darken this up a little bit right through here. And keep that lighter side pretty light. Darken just a little bit through here. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the shading of this. I think we're going to stop there. I'm not going to do any more to the stem of the apple. The only thing I might do is just clean up this line here just a little bit. And then the last thing I'm going to do is with a, a harder pencil, so an HB or a 2B, with a harder pencil, I'm going to go in and I'm just gonna add a few of the dots that are on the apple. So this is the very last stage. I'm just gonna go in and add a few of the dots that are here. So one thing I always tell students in a class is try to not evenly space things. So you wanna cluster a few of them and not space them perfectly apart. So this just creates just one more detail on the apple. Try to make sure they're not all in a line, either horizontally or vertically. And I think we're good. So you can keep shading if you want, if you wanna keep getting darker and darker with your apple. I would maybe shade a little further in here to keep getting mine darker, but there's your basic idea. And then you can, if you want to add a shadow under the apple, if we're going to add a little table, you can add it right here. And which way would your shadow go? Well, always look for the light spot and the dark so the, the light is coming from here. So your shadow, if you do one, is going to be down there and it's going to stop when the apple stops. So the shadow wouldn't continue past that. Okay, so if you wanna draw your apple sitting on something, your shadow would kind of come out about like this in this kind of a space. And there you have it, shading and blending to create an apple.
Thanks for joining everybody.